Hello everybody, welcome to my channel, it's the Modernist Colourist, Dev speaking. Uh, I've just got a few things for you today. I've got uh, a little bit of happy mail. Um, I've got a flip through I'd like you to look at. I've got a requested flip through. And as you can see here, uh, I've got these big markers, uh, which are the intense range. So I am going to swatch them out for you as well. Okay, so let's get cracked on. First of all, um, I got these from um, a supermarket in England called Asda. They were £7 for 12 markers. Um, the colour range is very good uh, and I'm looking forward to swatching those. So I'm going to open them shortly um, <clears throat> and then we'll do a bit of a swatch with those. Okay, so moving on, um, I'm going to open the first bit. These were sent to me by Albert. Um, at Black Widow Pencils. So I have a set of the Cobras, which I'll put down there. And then I have a set of the Scorpion. Now the Black Widows, for whatever reason, have been delayed in the post. These were sent to me uh, as a bit of a gift on the start of the channel. So <clears throat> I'm going to do uh, a picture with those on my first colour along. Okay. I don't need to do a review of these because I think most people have seen them anyway. So back to the big markers. Let's open them up and let's have a look at the pens themselves. So they look very similar uh, to the Sharpies. So here we have uh, the colours. We have like a, a peachy flesh tone, a light green, a red, a yellow, uh, a mid brown, a cerise pink, a purple, two shades of blue, light and dark, an orange, a turquoise and a black. Um, each individual marker is silver barreled um, with a nice click tip and the tip is a bullet point tip but it does have a fine end so I think these will be quite useful so we'll just move them across for the time being before we get those swatched and get on with the couple of flip throughs now the first one is, uh, I don't know if all that gets in shot or not, I hope so. This was requested by one of my new subscribers and it is the Daniela Jaglenka Terezini's Botanicals and that's from the Pictora range, the large ones. There are 12 large images in here and the quality of the paper which i think i mentioned in my first video is absolutely fantastic you can throw anything at this and it will take it even still i have uh, remained cautious and put some kitchen roll underneath just to catch any splashes that there may be but the paper is really really good so first of all we have this page which would be interesting to color it does tell you a little bit about each one. Um, I'm pretty sure that the back of each one, yes. The back of each one is the description of the picture. So the first one we saw was the Alliums, Alliums, um, which is a Bulgarian honey, honey garlic plant. And then moving on, we've got the, uh, the wildflowers here with the bee or the wasp and that is the clim clematis 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 I'm probably not saying that right this is one that I did myself uh, really enjoyed doing this um, <coughs> excuse me uh, I used um, the no, the what did it, a spectrum noir color blend and on the more finer bits here, I use polychromos on the shading. 
Uh, but I really enjoyed doing that. The blend in here, again, was with the Polychromos. I couldn't seem to blend the colour blend as well as I could with the Polychromos. And that plant is a lily. So let's move this. Next one, little feature of a ladybird on top. It'd have been better, wouldn't it, if we could see the title before I turned the page over, but never mind. So, um, that's another good one, um, especially the centres. Um, there could be lots of colours blended together out there, tapering in or out, going from light to dark or vice versa. And then it does lend a bit of shade in here on the insides of the, uh, of the leaves, which kind of tells you that that's darker than the, than the outside. And that was a chrysanthemum. Moving on to this one. Um, I suppose if you're a non-flower person, most of these images will look the same. But when you study them as a colourist, I think, you can see that each one uh, would require a different kind of work. Because like I mentioned on the other one, the shading here on the outside is done with dots. So, you, you, you know, depending on the colours you choose, you know which bits are dark and you know which bits are lighter, which I think is pretty handy, especially when you're first starting like I am. And those are peonies or peonies. This one's quite a good one. Uh, features another animal. I don't know if that's a kingfisher or a hummingbird. Um, you've got the three main flowers again you've got this dot design around the leaves which shows you where the darker parts are um, that lends itself to a lot of shading uh, and you will be able to blend your colours especially around here and those are passion flowers so the next one um, <clears throat> again reasonably similar um, but what I like about this one is the stems uh, you're going to have different coloured stems, which I think is a great contrast. Uh, it's very easy to, to, to come up to a colouring um, and then start doing the same colour for all the, the small thin sprouts, which I think is a bit of a cop-out personally. Uh, like with these, you can put some browns where, the, where, where it's overripe. Uh, you've got the, the lighter ones where you could put yellows that's not quite come into bloom and then you've got the the two uh the the double shaded ones the two-tone if you like than these three so i think that once you start coloring it all i think that would look uh, extremely detailed if you took the time to do the different colors uh instead of just one bland color and those are dahlias so moving on to the next one uh butterfly in this one um, unlike the last one, this one has got all similar uh, leaves. So I guess that would that would be a case of just shading the dark to the light, but keeping the same colour. Um, and then you've got the flowers with the dots, uh, showing you where the darker parts are. Those are orchids. And then moving on to these, these are like, again, we've got. A different array of uh, stems we've got the ones that almost look slightly hairy um, or prickly one of the two um, and that actually goes right up to the bud before it sprouts um, which you can see on this detail here so again uh, the color transitions you can use on there are fantastic and those are poppies Another insect up here, <clears throat> um, one, two, three, four main flowers, one just about sprouting. You've got to love this detail here. It just tells you, even, it even tells you which way to, uh, to use your pencil. You know, um, the short, darker strokes here, and then petering out to a lighter colour or a different colour towards the end of the tip. So I think this is probably the one that I would do next when I uh, delve back into this book. And those are water lilies. <coughs> Excuse me again. 
Uh, moving on, uh, they look like roses to me, those with the thorns on them. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but you do have the difference in stems again, plus you have the line art in the middle of the stem, which you can separate different colours uh, and make them really stand out. And those are, in fact, roses. I'm amazed I got that right, but never mind. Moving on then, uh, we have a snail featured on this one. Again, four main flowers, five main flowers, one just not quite sprouted. The leaves tend to be all very, very similar on this, so it'd just be a case of two turning each stem and leaf. And those are tulips. And that was requested, um, and I haven't been fully prepared by putting the name down, so I do apologise, but I will write it in the comments. Um, that was a request for a flip through. So, yeah, um, anybody want to buy this, I would uh, recommend it highly. And then moving on, um, I have a book here that I don't think is particularly popular. Um, I saw it on, <clears throat> I think it was on uh, Patreon, but I'm not 100% sure, so I wouldn't like to say it. It's obviously Polish by Magia Kolorowania or Kolorowania. This means Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, I think. Um, but the artwork in here is, is really, really good. It's quite dark in places and dark as in uh, mood as opposed to uh, heavy line art. So as you can see, the front cover is got a gold embossed kind of uh, detail on it. And then you've got the title page with a bit of colouring around the outside. The paper is absolutely fantastic on this. It's very similar to the Joanna Basford books and in size. So you know you're getting a good book if you decide to purchase this. Um, so that's the first page with a, a little bit of information down here uh, about the book and the ISBN. Try and do it. Okay, so here you've got uh, like a castle scene, a double page spread, which continues uh, with some Polish on it. I don't know what that means, but I guess it's once upon a time or something similar. Um, <clears throat> and then, as you can see, the detailed flowers, excellent. Uh, especially to practice your uh, gradation of colours. Um, this is a double page spread, but I'm not really sure why you can't see the, uh, and you do have to go into the spine, which is a bit of a downer, uh, but the artwork is fantastic. Uh, this one here, again, uh, lends itself to uh, lots of colours you could use on that one. So you've got butterflies on this page and then butterflies on the other page. Um, one's more in detail than the others. Again, you've got a very detailed flower hand to practice your skin tones. And then uh, some Polish illustration here. I'm not sure, again, I don't know what that means, but Around the outside, you've got this circular reef of roses or carnations. Again, with the uh, <clears throat> with the shading there for you to uh, to practice on. And then you've a double page spread full of roses again. Not sure we need that many roses, but never mind. And then here, um, you have a crib uh, underneath a tree with all the uh, the flowers. And again, a little bit of text in Polish uh, with the, uh, the leaves and the flowers continuing from the previous page.
There you have the character in the book. Um, leaves. Obviously, she's smelling the flowers and quite enjoying it. And then you've got a rabbit, which I know a lot of people have got a soft spot for, especially the colouring queen here with all the flowers at the front. Then you have uh, a sand timer here. I'm not sure what relevance that is to the story, but you have all this kind of wispy uh, wood effect, or almost uh, some kind of plant, which carries on onto the next page, and again with some Polish text in the top corner. You have the Queen here in a carriage. Um, again, that's a pretty good image. You've got some jewels around the side, you've got the crown, and then of course you've got the uh, the foliage at the front here. That foliage matches with the previous page, which again is a bit of a filler page really. But even still the artwork's very good and you could uh, make that look really nice. So here you have jewels in the crown, <clears throat> there are some plants and some leaves uh, and then the said plants are here with possibly a blackbird or a crow I think. Moving on you've got a princess type lady here with an ornamental mirror. And then you've got a load of spider's webs. I'm not really sure what we, you could do with those. But it might be an idea to uh, put glitter pen on, on the lines. Uh, cover out the black with something like a silver or gold or both. You have a kind of theatre mask here with candles burning. Um, and then you've got said candles again here burning away. It's a very large book, quite like this one with the black background. <coughs> you've got the forest animals, the hedgehog, the fox, the squirrel, which is on here, and then you've got the branches, uh, which are in white. You could do uh, stickles on that, I think that would look really good. They would really jump out against the black. That image there actually reminds me of some of the Maria Chual ones with the black background uh, and the facials very similar. This is a really good one. Um, reminds me of Joanna Basford a little bit. You've got the beetle, the ladybird, all the intertwining. Um, not sure what they are. Uh, which carries on to this side as well. It's like uh, symmetrical with the beetles opposite and the ladybirds opposite. Then you've got this lady here with the flowered hat uh, with the long flowing hair uh, and feathers and ferns coming off the hair. I think that would make a good picture, especially if you're adept at backgrounds. I'm not sure what that one is. I mean, it's cut her face completely off. Uh, she's on a swing. She looks relaxed. Um, but we can't tell that because you can't see her face. So I'm, I'm bemused at that one. And then <clears throat> it does continue on. So there the, the are a lot of double page spreads in this, uh, which, which kind of allows you to make your own mind up on what you do with them. Uh, You've got the lady again looking in the mirror. Uh, she's definitely not the fairest of them all, but, you know, she's trying, she's trying. And then you've got, <clears throat> again, the uh, theatre mask. I do like this one a lot. Um, I'll move it across so you can see both at the same time. 
of course there's a bat there um, and a bat here which I'm sure Anne would absolutely love in a colourful life another bat here but this could be done really dark uh, you know with dark reds and blacks um, and then some chrome to pop it off I think that would look really really good if you took the time to uh, get that one done And then we've got this bird again. I don't know if that's the same as the last one. I don't think it is. That's possibly an eagle. Uh, and then you've got like a, <clears throat> a hooded chap uh, with his bow and arrow. Kind of medieval looking. Again, very different. You wouldn't expect this. Uh, that's got to be a filler page. Just two pages of arrows, which... I guess follow on from the uh, from the last page, and then that's a heart with all the uh, sections all in different colours. I personally would just pick two colours with that uh, and make it stand out uh, in different tones. You know, uh, with layers, should I say? The darker ones with darker layers, and so on and so on. Uh, a purple and a pink or something, I think that'd look nice. And then moving across, you've got a couple of deers. Um, it's very hard to pick up the the ethos of the story, really, because uh, I can't read Polish. So. And then you've got this lonely girl here, the massive, massive oak tree in the background, which is another double page spread. A few toadstools here and uh, like I say a huge tree that would take absolutely ages if you did leaf by leaf. Lady again in the uh, in the foliage, plenty of leaves around her face, she's crying, she's really upset uh, and then a robin has come, I think it's a robin, has come to uh, keep her company. lady with a head cut completely off I'm not sure what that's about but she's holding a chest which I presume is a jewelry box of type uh, there's all the squiggles and the Tudor kind of patterns here and then there's a guy on one knee I don't know if he's proposing uh, that's pretty good to cut this lady's got the uh, the necklace, the heart of the ocean from Titanic on. Now I do like this one. Uh, it does look a bit heavy with the line art, but I do like it. You've got the log cabin, you've got the ferns, the pine cones, and then with it being a double page spread, it moves on to her. And of course she fits in with the whole picture. I think that would be my starting point in this book. Again, what you could only really describe as a filler page. Uh, weirdly, some pots and pans and a jar with one cherry in it. Uh, pint of beer, I think. Pepper, spoons, bread. So I guess it's just showing you what kind of stuff they have in the kitchen. And it almost does, because there we go again. We've got the carrots, the bread. I'm not sure what that is. Strawberry. And some other bits and bats. I think those are tomatoes, maybe. <clears throat> but the variety in this book is is really uh it's really varied. I mean it's it, unless you can read it, it's almost random, you know, the, the stuff that that they've just put out here. Uh, a lot of matches, some lit, some not, gas lamps. Uh, oil lamps, candles, uh, another set of them there, which you could use your comb skills on. And then we move on to gems, a double page of gems with a pickaxe in the background. So you could have diamonds, rubies, emeralds, sapphires, the job lot.
Now I have seen this image before, so this one, <laughs> this one will be my opening gambit. I think with this book, I love this because it's so vivid. It actually makes you can't stare at it. It's one of them. So I think that if you if the colour choice is right with the border, these in sort of subdued uh, colours would look absolutely fantastic. And of course, because they're uh, dressed in like Tudor oldie worldy costumes, you could use the old maroons, greys, dark greens and that kind of thing and really make this border pop out. That is definitely my favourite page. Um, and I presume they are the Seven Dwarves. But I can't seem to tell who's who. Uh, <clears throat> another kind of filler page, not too fond of this one. A few snowflakes about, which you could do in different colours, I guess. Big black thing in the middle, not a lot you can do with that. And then it follows on with more snowflakes. And again, uh, some writing in Polish. And then you've got the old lady, which uh, could be the one with the uh, heart of the ocean looking at her. But she's here and there is the hooded girl here and then loads and loads of swirls around as you can see. I'm not 100% sure what the significance is there. This is a good one. Uh, walking out into, uh, could be snow, could be sand. Uh, and then moving across you've got the wolf. Uh, within the trees, possibly looking at her coming down. So that would be a good one to uh, to look at your different contrasts and positioning. Are you sure this is not the Titanic book? There's a there's an old comb here. <coughs> Excuse me, and some flowers, leaves um, that kind of spread across the page in two two pages. Um, yeah, again, that's in Polish. Then you've got the girl upside down, uh, hair, flowers, leaves, all in one, intertwined. That's very good. And then it shows you the bottom of a dress. That's not very good. Um, there's not much effort being put into that as opposed to that. So it kind of spoils the uh, double page, does that, in my opinion. Then here you've got uh, the lady with loads and loads of flowers here. Um, she's got different coloured hair. And then next to that, the same flowers and the same kingfisher bird or hummingbird. Then of course, uh, you've got and that's either Snow White or the evil princess, one of the two. But that this mask has come up again. Burning candles again. Uh, this is very intricate. You'd have to use either a sharp pencil or fine liners in that. And then you've got a couple of stained glass windows with a black background. That's something different. You have the spider and the web. Then you have the cauldron bubbling away with the fire at the bottom and the ingredients going in. I think that's an apple. And then this lady with tempting with the apple. She kind of looks like uh, Lois from the Family Guy, I think. <laughs> Say Lois. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the um, woodwork is here the branches uh, that carries on onto the next page a lot of dark line art on this one but uh, you could still colour the majority of it you got half a lady um, who's laid down quite a lot of detail on the outside and then here you've got the, the poisoned apple, oh, five apples, six apples, which is the prominent feature on that page, and I guess that's what's made her sleep. Then you've got 
the lady lying down. Again, I don't show sure about these black animals here and the tree. Um, it kind of makes a mockery of the picture in my opinion. I mean, even if you coloured this tree really well, I don't think it'll look good next to the uh, solid black ink of those. Prince Charming on the horse. Uh, a lot of good leaves there to colour. The horse is a good, really well drawn to colour. Uh, and then you've got an owl. And I guess they've uh, they've fallen for each other. These two, so pigets. And then you've got a lot of flowers round here. And then you've got her just laid down, obviously daydreaming of of the guy. Uh, but this is a good double page spread. Lots of different flowers. And if you look across, again, the theme of flowers and trees. And then you've got what looks like a gemmed heart. Which you, if you adept at doing gems, you could do that in the reds. Possibly in the blues. Blue sapphire heart. Either or. And then uh, you've got this kind of dwindling picture which starts dark and ends light. Which moves on to the next page with just loads of feathers flying around. And then that's the final page. You've got the flowers, the butterfly, and then again here, the flowers and the butterfly. Marks out of 10. I'd probably give this book six and a half to seven uh, some of the images are really good the paper is extremely good some of the images are just too random and they've not thought about the spine and they've not thought about cutting heads off and that kind of thing but i thought i'd show it because it's it's quite an unusual book um, and it may appeal to more than others so here we go with that so as promised um i'm just going to swatch out um I'm going to swatch out these marker pens with there only being 12. Um, I'm just looking for a pen at the moment. I did bring one down. Just bear with me a moment, folks, please. These are the Spectrum Noir colour blend that I did first of all. They are quite good pencils those if anybody's ever thinking about doing them. So these are the big markers intense. Now hopefully, yes, we've got some uh, colours on there. This is Harvest Orange. So we'll give that a go. Let me just put something underneath. a bit there but never mind I'm actually stretching over because the camera here is not ideal I have ordered a new one I'm 
That's a bit like the mineral orange, I think, in the... Uh, in the Prismacolors. It's a bit untidy that, so I do apologise, but we get a gist of the colour. It is quite a nice colour. So that's Harvest Orange. And then I'll try and graduate them. So this one is Sunset Orange. Making right pigs here with this, but never mind. And that one was Sunset Orange. And then we have Hot Aqua. So as I'm getting back towards myself a little bit more, I should be able to uh, control the pen a little bit better. So hold the colour. Yeah, it's quite a dark aqua that, isn't it? This one, I'll just write that one. This one is Deep Sea Blue. It's a very, very prominent blue is that. That kind of reminds me of a, of a royal blue, navy blue. And then we have, I'll do this one next, Blue Skies Blue. That's a nice blue. <coughs> and then we've got Key Lime.
it's a lovely colour too. They're quite vivid. Um, the saturation's really, really good. It doesn't take a lot to cover a, a large space, which I do like. And this is Yellow Blaze. It's almost a goldy colour this one. And the next one is Desert Rose. Excuse me, I'll have a drink of tea. Oops. It's almost a tattoo ink colour, I like that one. Then we have Fandango Pink. I'll be reaching up for this one. Again, another nice colour. Now the last two, so we're moving on to a rambunctious red. Rambunctious red. It's not like making it easy for people like me. Oops. It's very difficult when I'm stretching. I do apologise. But as long as we get a gist of the the saturation and the colour, then we can make his minds up whether we want to purchase or not, can't we? And like I say, I don't know the availability online. I bought these at Asda uh, for £7 and I thought it was a good deal. I've heard a lot about these, and this is Peach Parfait. That's good as a skin tone, I guess. Oh, certainly for the dark parts of the skin tone. 
Okay, so there we have it. Um, I'm sorry it's a bit iggledy piggledy this video. Um, I have ordered a new camera. I've got quite long arms and uh, I can't do it any other way uh, than this at the moment, uh, unfortunately. The only way that I can do it is to have the tripod right next to my elbow here, otherwise uh, any further forward um, I'm reaching right over to the other end of the table. So I hope you've liked the flip through, uh, flip throughs. I hope you've liked the, uh, the swatching, albeit it's a messy one. Uh, and I hope you've liked the little bit of happy mail that I got. And uh, there are plenty more videos to come. So if you do like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. And uh, if you're not already subscribed, then please do so. And thanks for watching.